Welcome to Kids Sketch. Today we take a look at the 107-year-old botanical building in Balboa Park. This beloved icon, located at the heart of Balboa Park, was built for the 1915 Panama California Exposition. Alfred Robinson, the world's leading begonia breeder at the time and president of the San Diego Floral Society, came up with the idea for the botanical building to display an extensive array of stunning and unusual plants and to show off the amazing growing climate of San Diego. Some say this structure reminds them of the great conservatories of Kew Gardens in England or the New York Botanical Gardens, but those are conservatories and made of glass and steel. It's the umbracle in Barcelona, Spain that influenced Mr. Robinson. That building, built in 1888, is made of wood lath over a steel frame. Lath are those little flat pieces of wood. It's the openings between the lath that allows fresh air, light, and rain to filter through. Barcelona's climate is similar to San Diego's where the temperatures are mild and where plants rarely need protection from freezing. But here are some interesting and fun facts about the botanical building. The building is essentially a barrel vault. The barrel vault is made up of a line of steel arches to make it strong. And then they've attached curved slats of wood. That's the lath. And that's why it's called a lath house. Then they added another barrel vault built perpendicular to the first, and that's called a groin vault. And it's the groin vault that makes the building stronger than if it were just a barrel vault alone. In 1915, this building was called the Lath Palace. It's one of the largest buildings in the world to be constructed using lath. Did you know that there are 12 miles of lath in this building? That's like going to SeaWorld and back. The building is 250 feet long, 75 feet wide, and 60 feet tall. That's the equivalent of about 14 seven-year-old Michaela's standing on top of each other. The reflection pool was used as a swimming pool during World War I. Yep, it was used to teach sailors how to swim. And during World War II, it was used as a rehabilitation pool. The Botanical Building is arguably the most photographed spot in San Diego, maybe excluding sunsets. On the website, balboapark.org, they have some fun before and after photos of the Botanical Building in 1915 and in 2015. And they challenge you to find the differences. How many can you find? So before we start sketching, I usually remind you that we're sketching in this tutorial using a reference photo, but I always encourage you to go to the building sometime and sketch from real life. But uh, currently this building is closed for renovations and there's a big construction fence around the entire building. So you'll have to wait until at least 2023 for the fence to come down and you can see the building again but it won't look like your sketch today because they're returning the building to its glory days from 1915. They're bringing back all the arches and they've researched the original colors. So when that time comes, you can use your newfound skills of observation to sketch the building on your own. Before we start sketching, let's consider something. It's almost Mother's Day. You know how sentimental moms are, they love when you make them things rather than you buy them a card. So let's take our paper and fold it so that when we do our sketch on one side of it, it'll be a ready-made card. And all you have to do is put your message on the inside. So I'm taking my sketchbook page and ripping out part of it and then just folding it down like that. It's a horizontal sketch. It'll be like that. If you're using a loose piece of paper, just fold it. It'll work perfectly. We want to understand the proportions of this building first. You know, I like to use some sort of a measuring device to help me understand the proportions. So I like to use the end of my pencil as a measuring device. This is a particularly useful pencil because the metal part at the end of the pencil happens to be approximately the height of the building, the width of the building across, looks like it's about five and a half times the height. Hmm, I don't like uneven numbers when I'm trying to do proportions like this. Let's try another one. What about the circle in the middle? If you were to go to your, to your sketch, to your sheet, and make a circle in the middle, 
Not like that. Remember, this is our sheet. So we folded it over for a note card. Come up from the bottom a little. Go down from the top a little. At the edge of the circle, make a straight line, and the edge of the other circle, make a straight line. Okay, on the right hand side, can you make an X so that you're essentially making a square? Can you make another X and make another square? Let's do the same thing on the left. X to help you make a square. You could, you could eyeball your square too, it's just the X will help us keep it in proportion. All right, that with a slightly larger circle in the middle is approximately the shape of our building. I thought we did that pretty well. Well, let's go in and add a few other things. This arcade, this, this stucco area with the one, two, three, four, five arches in the middle, looks like this is not quite halfway up. So if that's our halfway point, come down just a little. And these go out a little farther. You see this is a railing out in front. It's a little bit below the bottom of our lath structure. It's actually just in the middle there. What would be the next thing? How about these little three arches in that middle area? I usually start just, I'll lightly put them in and see how my proportions are. I'll start with the one in the middle and I'll do one off to one side and the other side. Never, it looks pretty good, I leave it at that. All right, this has an arch. Looks like it might be just a tiny bit taller, but All right, we're really making some progress. Then there's a bigger dome up on top. It's hard to see. There's a, a cluster of palm trees in the way, but we're gonna we're gonna sketch those. Those will be kind of cool. All right. And if you'd like to get the big circle in the middle, you can't see for the palm trees, but it starts. A couple of these circles are coming together. It's so where the this circular form running perpendicular to that circular form and they they have an axis there where they cross in the middle. It's usually one of the more challenging shapes to draw in three dimensions or in perspective I should say. And see we have a couple little lines up top that are leading up to that cupola up on top. All right, the cupola. How tall is it? Feel free to eyeball it and do it lightly. It's just a rectangle sitting up top there, and it's got a half dome on it and a spire. And you see how these guys come out, and they've got some spires too. Did you sketch the lighthouse with us? There's something similar on the lighthouse. All right, there's our cool little cupola up top. Now let's take a look at this rectangular area here. Ours on our sketch is very rectangular. This, we're looking at the side of a barrel vault. So. How do we take that and make it look like that? Start with either end. Can you see how it curves back? You can see a little better here how it curves. It's coming up fairly straight near eye level and then it starts to sort of curve in. So let's go up straight about halfway and then curve in. And take your eraser and 
and see just by doing that it's already started to look three-dimensional. Let's go to the other end and do the same thing. It's a very symmetrical building. Go straight up and then curve in. It's pretty subtle, but these outer curves, this is the most extreme curve, and then they're going to flatten the closer they get to the middle. This very center one, if we were looking at just the barrel, it would be straight up and down and it wouldn't be any help. It's the ones on the side that, that give us a little bit of that dimension. How many sections are there? One, two, three, four, five, six. So there's a line right in the middle right here where we have our X, and that's going to go in just a little. This is a good time to look and see, see how we're going to add these other two in between, see how they relate to each other and they help. We might find, I'm thinking mine, I've got it too straight, I need to start curving in a little sooner. And so you just adjust. They want to be light and when we get to the pen we to the inking part we may not we may decide not even to 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 uh, draw these lines in at all. We might find another way of helping the building turn, curve in. There. So, what would help us next? Let's do the reflecting pond. So the reflecting pond is definitely, its sides are definitely in perspective. There are these parallel lines on the edge of the pond are going back to a vanishing point. But since it's the only thing in perspective, let's not go through the whole explanation of vanishing point. Let's find an easy way of getting these lines to look accurate. One way, the easiest way, since there's just the two lines, take your pencil and find that approximate angle. Okay, so at the edge of this round form, coming straight down, that's where our line's gonna start, our angled line. We have it there. This is where they come down. That was our angle. If you wanted to, you could use, if you had two pencils, you could use it as a straight edge. Oops, see how that, that helps? Showed that I didn't eyeball it very well. How far out does it go? You can see that in the photo, it goes off and it runs off the edges and we don't see it here. So this is where you can decide how wide do you want your drawing, your sketch. If we start to put a border on here, and remember we've got our little page. I'm going to leave some room at the bottom so I can say Happy Mother's Day or right where I am. I'm going to take it up pretty tall. I think it'd be really cool to try to, to sketch in the top of that uh, palm tree. Okay, now what? When we get around to it, we're going to see that we're going to give just some hints of what's going on over here. There's, you know, a few steps and planters and some trees and we're going to use some of these trees as um, shade them in but we're just there's they're sort of balls in our sketch 
couple of balls in the front that are palm trees, and then this blob behind that we are going to shade in because it makes a nice silhouette. Our building really punches in front where the light is hitting it against that dark shadow. That that We don't have to mention much on the building if we have that defining our edge. All right, over here, there's a couple of more balls hiding the end of our building, and it helps our composition. See how those, just some circles that are the palm trees and other trees help to give some definition to our to our sketch. All right, and we want we do want the edges of the the fountain to go to the edge of the sheet. I'm just putting in some of these tall palms. They're kind of cute. And then there'll be just some trees over here. Let's talk about now the reflection in the water. There's the end of that railing. And then you can see this dark arch. See those arched openings? They're very dark and we can see them reflected in the water. So let's just lightly transfer the vertical sides of those arches down like that. And then all of our little reflections are we're going to draw, we're going to sketch as little horizontal lines. We hardly see where the arches are because there must be a breeze blowing. It's causing an awful lot of ripples. If it were a smoother day, and if you wish, you could give a hint at those little round top guys. You could give a hint that there's this arch here that you would see in the reflection. So what's in the building is reflected in the water. It's almost like you are going to take your sketch and sketch it upside down. And you can decide how much you want to see. And then when we get to the to the inking, we can we can add a few more things. Would you like to do these lily pads? I don't I don't know that I'm not certain about it is because there's so much in the forefront. We'd have to add a lot of detail to be to be realistic. But one of the things you could do is think about a profile. Like here's some leaves. And then we won't sketch those at all. We allow them to be there to frame our, our little sketch. All right. There's a couple more things to do now. We'll get back to the building. We're sort of building our sketch up. So we'll get back to the building and there's some, some curved pieces here, but we can definitely see some vertical and horizontal lines. There's some ribbing in there in the lap. Like that. And then there's a lot of darker areas here and it's really hard to see what's going on. And when we get to inking, we will just shade those in because we really can't see them. All right, so we've completely ignored what's going on Um, at, at the barrel vault. We're seeing the face of it. You can see a little shadow here. The light is coming from top. So the, the brightest area is going to be along that top. And as that form rolls towards us, it gets a little darker. So you could do a series of lines that are a little closer together near the bottom where most of the shadows are. And then they will get farther and farther apart as you get closer to the top. If you will notice, they do have some horizontal pieces. And it was interesting to note, I could tell that these horizontal pieces are on the inside. And originally in the building, when the building was built in 1915, they were on the inside and there weren't these horizontal pieces on the outside. I'm betting over time, those bent lath boards started to flip up if there was ever a seam. And so they probably added these on the outside so those little ends that wanted to peel up would be laid flat. 
but they're very useful for us in defining the fact that the barrel bolt is rolling back away from us. And that is when we see them in these lower parts, they look about equal. And then as the building starts to get away from us, those little pieces get closer and closer together. We could start with some, some of these guys that are close together and then start making them farther apart. And then the reason that you've got a little more color down here is just that it's in shadow. So they're closer together up top. They get farther apart. And then we start to add some shadow near the bottom. All right, how is yours looking? Is it looking like a barrel vault? We're going to come back in when we start shadowing and we're going to shade in these arched areas like that. Or if you're working in pencil and you run out of time or run out of patience, you're just about done. It would make a sweet little pencil sketch. Oops, we promised that we would do all of these with horizontal lines and not other lines in that, that way. It emulates the water, the ripples in the water. Before we start inking, I, I think I'd like us to sketch in these palms. It, you could ignore them completely if you would like, but I'm going to show you how how I would I would do them if if I were because I I think I will sketch them in. So there's a, a lot of little trunks, a lot of little lines. Just they're not straight lines; they curve a little, and then a series of little circles. It's almost like a hand, isn't it? And they cover a good part of this area and most of that dome, but not all of that dome. So looking at what it's covering will help you. I, I've taken them a little too far to the left. And actually, if you see, they come in on the water just a little bit. It's interesting, the more you look, the more you'll see. And as you relate them to other pieces, it really helps your your sketch and the accuracy or perceived accuracy of it. All right, there's a little hand there. And how about this one? It comes in just a little on that side as well. It's definitely in between that arch and that arch. It's covering hmm, most of that dome and quite a bit of this corner here. All right, and when we come back, we can um, ink it in. I think, for the most part, I'm not going to pay too much attention to the people or to these urns. They're just too small. But this tree here, another little circle, that tree back there, you see how it gives definition to the vertical part of that, that arched opening. All right. It would help if there's a second line radiating out. You can see, you can find your vanishing point, the point where all these parallel lines run back to now that you've put the edge of your fountain in. And then from there, radiating out, you can get the back edge of that sidewalk gives a little more definition. And then we can erase some of those lines. I have my pen. At this this size of sketch, I think this extra fine pen point will, will work well. So we'll start maybe the way we started our pencil sketch. Outline a little. Along the top. Um, not going to do too much on this left hand side because you'll see that a lot of our trees are going to start are going to start covering it up. So I don't think we need to do much there. But let's concentrate on the on the middle of the portion of the building. We did the top. Now we can do this center um, globe portion.
and these ribs. It'd be really like maybe just some dash lines for those ribs as they come down on the face of the building. They're really subtle, but they're helping you define that the building is curving. We can do the arches. The edges of the arches. And because we've already laid these out in our pencil, we could go ahead and add some of this uh, foliage. Usually I like to start with line and shape and then get into detail, tonal values and shadow. Well, blocked out our lines and our shapes and the ink is um, helping us with some of our details. So even though we did these trees last, I think we can sketch them out of order because they're all working, making a composition. That other tower, we're just seeing the left edge of it, and we're seeing most of the dome on top. And we've got that railing here. You can see the rest of the arch through the tree. If you want to, you can show that that railing is some little, um, from here, they just look like little pickets, but when you're up close, they're, they're sort of or it's an ornate balustrade and it's a really sort of interesting. The edge of the pond. And I'm just sort of building it up. I could, if you decided to do this, do this little edge treatment here. Just to remind ourselves not to keep sketching forever. <laughs> Go ahead and do the rest of the border. The cupola up on top. It's made out of copper, I believe very lasting materials. And the redwood on that the lath is made out of a very uh, long lasting material. Redwood is used a lot in construction because termites don't like to eat it very much. And termites like to eat a lot of wood and wood structures have a problem with that. Some of the lath They've replaced the lath a number of times over the last century plus. And there's some of the lath that's still original. It's pretty amazing. In the new in the restoration, they're gonna probably wind up replacing all of that redwood lath. It's pretty amazing that that the lath has lasted so long because they're little slats that are one inch by three inches wide. And the sun and the weather can really beat up wood. So it's pretty amazing that that it's it's lasted as long as it has. All right. Now let's do some of the other before we go in and, and try to give some some shape and texture to the rest of the lath structure. Let's do some of the surrounding pieces. We have some of these trees. We'll shade in their shadow side. See how there's a bright side and the sun is coming from that direction and there's a shadow side underneath. With a circle, it's almost like there's a little smiley face under, under the shadow side. Gives it some definition. Shadow down there. 
some of these palm trees. Shading the palm pumps. See how they're like little fans? You can just do a series of little fans for your palm trees. They hand them around in circles because that's the way these, I believe these are Washingtonia robusta. So the exhibition was 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 meant to show off all that that Southern California had to offer, all that California had to offer, actually, but but especially Southern California with its temperate climate. And that's why this laugh house with its which was open, that allowed sun to come through and wind to come through and and the rain to come through and and help water the plants. And to show off to the rest of the world just how wonderful things grew here. All right, we have this palm structure. It's we're so far away and our sketch is so small that it's just going to look like a circle with the lines radiating out and your shadow pattern. See, it's this side of the circle that's got most of the shadow. The part where the sun is over towards would leave that unsketched. And we have a, sim a similar, similar palm tree over here. Be interesting to know. I don't know the answer to this, but it'd be interesting to know which of these, if any of them, which of these palm trees were original, planted in 1915. That is a Moreton Bay fig tree. It's not the famous one. That's a little bit farther away. But this one would have been planted in 1915. And for Earth Day, we did sketch a Moreton Bay fig, one that's in La Jolla in front of the La Jolla Historical, excuse me, the one that's in front of the Museum of Contemporary Art San Diego there in La Jolla. All right, what else do we want to do? A few more things. We will want to get some silhouette going on these plants. We will want to do our shadows. We want to shade in our arches. That's an easy thing to do right now. I usually just will pick a direction for my, my cross hatching. I try not to make them too solid dark. Get a little extra shadow on the side. The side that would be closest to the light. The light's coming from that way, and so its shadow is probably most dark up there or any reflected light bounces around and hits it. Okay, let's do the reflection in the water. Now remember that we want to do like a series of dashes and then they get a little closer where they're actually reflect reflecting. So dashes and lines to suggest that we're seeing the ripples some of the lines can go all the way across. They don't have to just stop in the middle. There's definitely a dark line where the wall is hitting the water. Darker line there. If there's any of these other verticals that you'd like to pick up, go ahead and, and do that. So, the 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 silhouette there that contrast between the light of that tower and the dark of the palm tree is a good thing to catch we have another one here and some of this maybe it's not exactly as what you're seeing you can use a little artist license the other thing that's going to change is when you're actually out there the wind is going to be shifting. Your reflection is going to shift. What if the wind stops blowing completely? 
you will have almost a mirror reflection there. If the wind picks up, you'll hardly see you hardly see the reflection at all. And you know that's sort of what's happening here. As the, the wind is probably a little stronger out at this end of the reflecting pond than back at that end of the reflecting pond, because because we're seeing more of a mirror image. And that's a function of, of how much how much of a breeze is there. I'm usually in favor of fewer shadows, fewer details, but there's some people who really like to add a lot of punch to their sketches and add a lot of darkness. I can see what they, I, they, they add some drama and some interest. Um, A lot of people mistakenly think of this as a greenhouse. There's a big difference between a lath house and a greenhouse. Can you think of what it might be? A, a greenhouse usually has a solid glass roof. Greenhouses are all uh, sometimes made out of plastic too. The lath house is made not of solid material. It's made of solid material. It's made of wood, but it's the the lath is set so that the air filters through the light filters through and they were originally done to to emulate like a like the forest uh like a like a rainforest where it's sort of open and the light filters in there like a rainforest but the sun is not so strong that it damages uh, some of the tender plants Okay, two things left. One is um, the plant material that's that's giving us this lovely little silhouette back here. And I would recommend that you start with an outline and then keep it kind of loose. Like that. Then come in a little bit, maybe with another line and darken those up. This is like the understory of the trees and it's it's helping to give uh, more that, that punch, that silhouette we were after. You could do some cross hatching here. But what we wanna do is to define that crisp edge there. You see that? Now you get to decide, do you like it well enough to do it again on the other side? Maybe a little. Maybe I'll let the dog in. could also just do a series of horizontal lines with some additional cross hatching. I like to add some scribbles that suggest some of the leaves. We're going to come back in shortly and start erasing some of these lines and that's going to help But this is one of the most, or the most photographed building in San Diego. And you can see why the, the composition with the symmetry and the reflection, it's very pretty. I'm going to try to erase a little now. Hmm. 
I'm going to try to erase a little now. I'm going to take a kneaded eraser, though. I could also use the eraser at the end of my pencil. I want to lighten up. I want to take away some of some of these guidelines, maybe not all of them, because I want to see how well the sketch is reading with with the ink. We we might decide that we have enough of a hint of that curving form that we don't need anything else. I'm using the end of my pencil because I need to get more of these lines. I guess I might have sketched a little with the pencil a little too hard. See what I mean about now that we've taken away some of these pencil lines, we can see what's left. I can see that we don't have enough line weight and hint on the building itself to suggest that it's turning. So let's come back over here and find where the ground was. I'll draw just sketch in a few horizontal lines because that's a ground. Okay, then I'm going to finish dashing in the ribs that we would have seen. And then lightly and do some shadow there. So they're going to be a little closer together closer to the bottom it gets. Can you see how we're doing that? A little darker near the bottom. And I'm going between the ribs. And the other thing we wanted to do was to give it some definition near the top and do this with a series of really light lines so close together. I know this sounds it's kind of confusing where it's like, well, I'm putting the lines closer together near the top where it's supposed to be the lightest, but that's to give a hint that the barrel is going back. So these little guys are getting closer together. Then closer together, the top, near closer to the top, and then they get farther apart as they come toward us. And then down here, this is more shadow. And you can add a little extra shadow to your trees, add a little extra shadow to the ground so that we have some definition between building and trees. And wherever else you'd like to add a little extra shadow or a little extra texture, but I'd say we're, we're getting just about there. Do you have a blue pencil? Should we color in the sky? I think that would be fun. I've got a fairly light blue pencil, but any blue will work. And then maybe we can pick up some of that blue from the sky reflected in the water. And the blue from the sky is going to be way out here. Remember, it's it's like a mirror image. So if it's if the blue is up high, the blue will be down here low. Wasn't too many clouds in the sky the day this photo was taken. Now you know that I, I always encourage, we always if we can, like to go in front of the building. This one, as soon as it's open, it'll be fun 
you will have this new skill. You'll know how to sketch the building. So as soon as it's back open, which I think is 2023, 2023, um, but it won't look exactly like this because they are returning all the original arches in front of the building to the back as, as if, just like it was in 1915. All right, how's that? And then look at your sketch and see what else you missed. I feel like this little corner is floating a little too much, so I'm gonna add a few shadows just to ground it a bit. Oh, and don't forget, where are we? It's the Botanical Building. Balboa Park. And we're not actually there, but let's set the date anyway. May. 2022. That's when you did your sketch. And there's your Mother's Day card. You can write on the inside. There you go.